Hello everybody and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Today we're done with all the action on Kashyyyk and we have to go and make the rounds on our friends and make sure everyone's doing okay. But everybody sure has a lot to say as you'll see. And so I hope you all enjoy this episode and I will be with you with the chit chat in a moment. I'm just gonna run around my ship and talk to people and try to remember what I was doing ever at all. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, war stories? I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you. But I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. In one battle above the world of Althea, my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan. Ooh. Tell me the story! For five days, they had managed to hold off our forces, keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Altheory would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. In detail. Hmm, did it work? Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening. A mistake they had made in the disposition of their forces and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating. Jeez. Okay. Uh, you're. Face? Oh, her ha her face headphones are upgrading slowly. Yeah, now she's got two, and she looks like. I don't know. It looks like it's supposed to be a jaw decoration. I have no idea. The practicality of these things is really hilarious. Um, what did they do? Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. Their command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plane of the rings to escape us. They were shredded by the rings, or crashed into rocks, or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end, as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time, maybe, I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with things. I'm really mad. Is there something else you want I can't to know? romance Candorous, I'm not gonna lie. It's for jaw to jaw combat. That's what making out is called. And I think this would inhibit making out <laughs> the ultimate jaw decoration. I'm excited. Uh, do you know anything? It has big trees, in case your eyes don't What is it? But I do know that there is one exceptional race on this world. The Wookiees. The Wookiees, although primitive compared to us, are surprisingly capable warriors. They're strong and pick up combat techniques pretty quickly. I think they're more than a match for the average Republic or Sith trooper. When we were looking for targets, we considered this world carefully. We were wondering if we'd have to use larger weapons than our war droids if we wanted to clear the damn forest so we could fight in the open. Too many trees means they can go into hiding too easy. And what's a continent or two turned to glass if we get the whole world after? You have anything else you want to Jeez, ask? Jeez Louise! Um, uh, nothing for now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done For right. reals, though. Journal entry. Oh, uh, Candorous. Oh, he told you about the honors he won, leading a unit in the battle over Althea. It seems that he was quite the warrior back then. You could probably hear more if you asked him about it again later. Okay. And I still have these little, like, interlopers on my ship. Obviously, your dramas overpower your opponents and gain dominance. <laughs> oh, these things? Yeah, <laughs> these are giskas. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, it's a baby with no eyeballs. You can, uh, you can kill them all. But I just kind of left them. <gasps> I try to pick it up, but it wriggles from my grasp and plops down back to the floor. Uh, pet it. 
You scratch the little critter behind the nubs that pass for years and it coos enthusiastically. Oh, play a game. You play peekaboo with the little <laughs> hiding your face behind your hands and startling it each time you appear. What fun. Oh, man. Okay. Looks disappointed by the lack of attention and hops away. All right. Yeah, you can kill them all. I probably shouldn't have let them on my ship, but I did. So there you have it. Um, where is everybody? I have to find everyone. Here's our little stowaway. Mucha shaka paga. Uh, you gotta communicate with Sasha in her language. Mucha shaka paga. Uh, why are you hiding on my ship? You came to the ship. I mean, I feel like we've done this, but I just want to reiterate. You came to the ship before. You're very scared. Why? You left the Mandalorians and hid here on the ship. You don't want to leave. The Ebon Hawk is. It's my ship! Well, what are we going to do? Um, the Ebon Hawk is not your home, not your first home anyway. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tell me about your home before. Tong ki ba non tontek. Uh, Dantuin? She doesn't understand. Um, no, wait. Uh, Mucha. Hiding in my ship. Came to the ship before. Mandalorian. Why are you scared of the Mandalorians? They took you before and hurt you? The Mandalorian ship wasn't home. You didn't like it. You sleep here on the ship? Point to the nearby service panel. You understand that she must have been sleeping in the ship's repair ducts. Okay. Thank you. No, you don't have to go uh, for now. Now look at my quest log. Are you sure? I don't think she did anything. Uh, wait, this is the Gizka. Strange stowaway. She was learned that she was doing a board that she apparently she was once held by Mandalorians long enough to learn their speech but nothing else. And she escaped from them long enough to stow away in the Ebon Hawk and hide. Her original home seems to be Dantooine. Perhaps someone there could help her. Okay. Alright. So we forwarded something with her. That's good. I don't even know where anything is. It's my own ship and it all looks the same. Hi, Grammy! Okay, here's, uh, here's the robot. My little robot. Mm, you don't talk much, do you? Just chime in if you ever have any advice. Okay. How's it going? Um... Have you, uh, anything to say about yourself? You have seen more than I would have allowed and taught me some things too. I am grateful for that. It will be a while before I know what my role will be in making Kishik truly free. I have a lot to learn. Why did you request to take Baka's sword? I'm not sure I really know. Father expects much of me. I guess I do as well. I think when I've learned enough, I'll bring it back to Kashyyyk. What happens then? We'll see. I'm sorry we can't stay on Kashyyyk longer. You and I have important things to do, and I don't feel bad about leaving this time. I know I'll be welcoming back. I wish you well. Let's get going. Oh, get a spike? From the little robot? Okay. Because uh, he can make me grenades, but I can get this guy to give me spike. Can you get a programming spike for me? Yeah, he just gave it to me. Can you give me a grenade for free? Make me a grenade. Yay. Um, wonder if you guys have a problem. Okay. 
I was gonna see. I I had I could have I could have said something about the stowaway problem to him, but I didn't. I get, and it didn't give me another chance. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? I was wondering if you could help me. Well, no, I'm not gonna ask about that. I guess. If anything be done about all these gifts, cut. I do not know how to help you with that. I am sorry. What? For real? That's it? How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? Can we talk? What is it you would like to speak to me about? Uh, well, tell me about your past. Well, I suppose I have not talked very much about the Jedi I met back home. They, all of them, were so very invigorating. Uh, what? Invigorating? They were so very alive, so full of hope and energy and zeal. In retrospect, I can see it was a little bit tragic. Tragic? Well, yes. These Jedi were going to fight the Mandalorians just after they had invaded. Many of those Jedi perished in the fighting, but to us, they seemed invincible. Especially their leader, who they talked about all the time. Paragons of light and justice sweeping away all iniquity before him. It was like looking at gods. Darn straight, I do look divine. If that was the case, they seemed to be misrepresenting themselves. I was merely using poetic license. Those Jedi, they were enthralling. Everyone wanted just to touch them. Some people thought it that's bring not poetic life. justice or the peace they brought lasted very long. The, the, that's not poetic license. That's literally saying we considered them basically gods. <laughs> what happened? The Jedi left. The people grew complacent. Those who had been wronged saw their chance at revenge. And so the cycle continues. The oppressed become the new generation of oppressors. The human oppressed, that is. The non-humans were never treated well in any case. We felt the brunt of both administrations. Was it that bad? Of course it was. They took their frustrations and hate out on us because the people they wanted had already fled or were too well protected. But no one looks out for the injustices we suffered. Oh no, but... But I am sorry. I should not have outbursts like that. Mm. As long as you do not let your anger influence you. Don't you see? The very fact I mentioned it means it has its influence. Anger can lead to the dark side. And I must be ever careful that I do not fall back into those ways. I... Uh, I thank you for your support. <gasps> Ida! Uncalled for. You did not lash back at me. You are a much better Jedi than I. Would seem. Nah, I shouldn't get mad at you. Now. We should continue on our journey. Perhaps later we will talk again. <laughs> Journal entry. Johanni. You've heard from Johanni that her people were oppressed and ostracized by the human majority. It seems that the Jedi were the only ones to treat her fairly and maybe why she admires them so much. Perhaps in a little while she will reveal more. Perfect. Perfect. Shiny blinky room. Looks like a security room, maybe. Or like a weapons room, maybe. Yes, maybe. It's been so long. Hey, galaxy map, Karth. Yes, what's on your mind? You. <laughs> yeah. Mission Bachelor Karth jo Jolie. Yes, I had to talk to all of them. Are we, are we working? And it actually crashed. We didn't end our last discussion very well. well I, um, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I, I know I owe you an apology. Uh, more than one, probably. Bravo. I was just so desperate to finally face Saul directly in the Battle of the Terrace. And now the Jedi have us looking for these, these star maps. I know this mission is important. It's just, I, I feel a bit useless. I, I, mean, I can fight, sure, but I'm no Jedi. All this feels completely out of my league. 
Hmm. Uh, wow. None of these, uh, okay. And how does that excuse your action? Uh, no. Why don't you turn to the front lines then? Because this is more important. This may really finally make a difference. I suppose even if I can't figure out everything that's going on, I still want to help if I can. I just hate not knowing what's going on and feeling this. I get that. I get that. I mean, I, but I shouldn't have taken. You shouldn't have. Me. I've been a royal. Pain yes, you time. have. <laughs> so Caden's voice. I've just been voicing good guy space boys for a while. Yes, good guy. Good guy space boys with a sort of traumatic past. Yes, he's got a type. Uh, you sure have. <laughs> well, I guess I should be at least a little pleased that I- Oh, look at that laugh. So, I'm sorry. Will you accept my apology? Yes. Uh... I don't know. Maybe you should just- You should work for it a bit. <laughs> Only if you agree to work with me for once. I, I hope this is like, look at him, like, he's like bent over and he's like, please have mercy, have mercy. <laughs> um, mm, uh, sure, only, if, I feel like... I would say this with like a, in like a coy way, but I don't know if that's the way it's gonna come across. So I'm gonna do the middle one. Only if you agree to work with me for once. Done. Let's get underway then, shall we, partner? Partner. Partner. <laughs> Cause has apologized for his previous behavior and has promised to try not to punish his current companions for the betrayals of people in his past. Whether or not he can accomplish this remains to be seen. Alrighty. Sounds good. Best. How can I help? You wanted to speak to me? Yes, I did. I wanted to speak to you about our mission and what lies ahead for us. It seems fate, or the Force, is driving us into a confrontation with the Dark Lord. You must prepare yourself for when we face Malak. The confrontation will be difficult for you. I remember how hard it was when I first faced Revan. Uh, seems like that flirty coy one to be... Yeah, yeah, that's the one I wanted to do, but like... I wasn't sure if it would actually be the flirty coy one, you know what I mean? Like, or if it would be like super ultra serious. Super ultra serious. I don't want that. That's no fun. Is it true you killed Darth Revan? It's true that due to my battle meditation, I was with the Jedi Strike team that boarded Revan's ship. We did not kill Revan, however. Ah, uh, what? Um, what, what, that's, who killed Revan then? Our mission was to capture Revan if possible. It was Malak who took Oh yeah, that's right, right? ...upon Revan's ship while we were still on board it. It was his desire to kill us and his master both. Thankfully, we narrowly escaped the vessel as it exploded. <gasps> so Revan might be alive? Um, well, you would have killed Revan eventually, right? As I said, we were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what. Oh, that's a big old lie. Big old Revan fat lie. For once, great Jedi, heroes in every sense of the word. They demonstrate the danger of the dark side to us all. I'm sorry, we really shouldn't speak of this anymore. The memory of my confrontation with Revan is painful. Let's return to the mission. Please. You're the one who wanted to talk. You're the you're literally the one who wanted to talk. In order to prepare you for your meeting with Darth Malak, Bastila described her own encounter with the Sith Lord Revan. She didn't describe anything! According to Bastila, the Jedi wanted to capture Revan alive, but were foiled when Malak betrayed his own master. How can I help? I'd like to know more about you. Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. Tell me how he's running the Jedi. I was found to be strong with the Force at a young age, as most Padawans are. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal Ravan, as all Padawans do. My family is still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. The Jedi separate children from their families. Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst, but even love can lead to folly. Uh, you, you aren't allowed to love? Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. 
taking me to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. You find her voice soothing? Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, is she Femme Shep? I forgot. Uh, I don't know. I kind of want to kick her in the teeth. <laughs> she kind of talks like she's a robot. Oh, my Yogi, you cute boy. Uh, you don't sound very convinced. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family, but I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. Uh, you and your father were close? Very close. I was only a little girl when I left my family, but I still remember him fondly. He was kind and gentle and doted on me. My mother, however, was different. I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. Jeez, she's a... Uh, for being a little girl, she was very aware of what was going on. Uh, the Jedi just really... Yeah, no, it, Subby, it's so interesting to look at the Jedi and be like... Like, they're like, there is no emotion, there is only peace. And it's like, peace comes from overcoming trials. Like, it comes from overcoming difficult things. So, by denying yourselves what essentially makes you human, you're just as bad as the Sith, in a way. Like, you know, like the Sith only believe in passion, but they don't believe in love either, you know? And then there's the Jedi, who don't believe in emotion, and they don't believe in love either. And both eventually come crashing down. But they can't cut it out entirely. Like, we're human beings. You can't cut it out. I think they're like, it was like an overreaction to the Sith being like, Oh, yes, passion, yeah, feelings, emotions. And it's like, well, that looks like it's not good, so let's not do any of that. And it's like, no, you guys, like... That's why I'm a super big fan of the Grey Jedi path, because it's like, it allows you to be human. Right, if you have a constant never feeling, that's called tranquil. If you play the female trooper in Swarter and talk to Satili, it's basically Fem Shep talking to herself? Nice! You've uh, never tried to get in touch with your father again? The child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse But them. it can also clarify and make things great. I mean, love can make you do stupid things, but... I don't know, being removed from it can just... it. I think being removed from emotion is a faster way to the dark side because then you have nothing to connect you to other people that you're supposed to care about. <sighs> you sound very sad when you say that. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss <gasps> She looks so sad! Look how sad she looks! Another? Oh boy, Bachelor. She told you something of her life before the Jedi. She was very adamant in her support of the Jedi's policy of severing all familial relationships as emotional attachments are inherently dangerous to a Jedi. How can I help? Um... I'm quite oh! Why is no one willing to help me? Emotion exists for a reason. Like, of course, too much is bad. Just like, too much of anything is bad. But fear exists to keep you safe. Love exists to keep us together. As creatures and communities, anger lets you stand up to injustice. No, yeah. No, no, no. It, it's not overcompensating. It's definitely, it's definitely idiotic. No, I agree with you, 100%. I love, I love seeing, like, the flaws of the Jedi system and seeing kind of where they sort of created their own downfall, essentially. I mean, I love the Jedi, don't get me wrong. I think they had a lot of really good ideas, and, like, they were a very, they were a very good, a force of good in the galaxy, but they sort of cut their own legs out from underneath of them. Um, hello, Flyery! How's it going? Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Star Wars Saturday. Is today Saturday? I think it is. Okay, now I have to find... 
Oh my gosh, it's not gonna tell me where anybody is. Cool beans. And I'm gonna leave it off there. Thank you all so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one.